So somebody left me this comment in one of my videos and I thought, hmm, that's a good idea. Tips and tricks on how to make a facade more aesthetically pleasing. So I compiled a list of five tips that I use all the time and they work with any style. They're also relatively cheap in terms of construction price. So I wanna share a real life example of how I took this to this and share with you the thought process. So if you're interested, then please keep on watching. To give you some context, this was a ground up project by the California Colorado River. The site has stunning views. I mean, look at this. It's just really, really beautiful. And the client had 99% uh, of the design done by a previous architect and he reached out to me to kind of give him some feedback on the facade and the layout. So the, I'm gonna show you some of the before renderings and uh, some of the after renderings. So um, this was the previous architect rendering um, and she didn't really give a front rendering, but this is what I did based on what I received and this is what this is what I turned it into So I'm gonna show you what I added to get to the final result So I think the first tip would be texture and materials have a rich facade But make sure you're not overdoing it like have cladding or a different material texture and make sure your facade doesn't look too flat or lifeless if you notice most of the cool facades have more than one material, but this does not mean you should go and stick wood or like stone all over your facade and have it all covered up. No, that's just too much. If you notice here on this example, I only did it on one side of the wall. Like I didn't do it around the door. I didn't do it around the garage. I just put it on the right side so it doesn't look too much. Next tip would be lighting. Wash the facade with lighting features, whether it's a linear or downlight by the landscape. This really elevates the look, especially at night. It will make any house look like a million dollar mansion. For example, if I show if I show you here, like the fact that I added that one sliver LED strip, it really elevated the look from this to this. Um, and that's like usually a very cheap way of elevating the look without having to break the bank. And most of the clients will be okay with that. So what the lighting does is it gives the the facade it gives the facade some depth like it really can make or break the architecture and i see a lot of designers and architects neglect that i mean sure we're not the specialists there are lighting designers that do this better than us but if you can't afford having a lighting consultant i mean do your best with just like some down lights or led strips that can really do magic to the facade and like i said it will make any house look like a million dollar without breaking the bank Number three, landscape. You can do a lot with landscape. And there is a quote that I like by Frank Lloyd Wright that says, a doctor can bury his mistake, but an architect can only advise a client to plant vines. Again, it's just that he's referring to if you make a mistake and like you add a wall, just cover it up with vine and the problem is solved. Again, if we look at the two examples here, so just having a bare wall without having any plants or anything, it's just like, looks sad and depressing. It kind of looks, literally like the life got sucked out of it. But once you add like some plants, especially on a narrow um, hallway or a narrow entrance like this, it really makes all the difference. So just carve out some side planters on the side and then add your plants and it really makes the magic. And one last thing here, it's not necessarily about a facade, but I, I, you're probably wondering why all of a sudden we have another door here. This is what I just suggested to the client because originally they, if we look at the plan, this was the entrance. You have to come down through all this narrow um, walkway and then get to the entrance. And I just told the client, you have a really good potential of having a courtyard there. So why don't we close this off and then have a courtyard um, so you go through the courtyard to get to the house and then it would create something like this. And I just added like some um, some curtain walls and then some brisolet or you can call them, um, what are they called? Um, louvers or brisolet or just cladding and then you get like a really nice look out into the courtyard and then um, so yeah I just felt like it was kind of a wasted potential and I just told the client I'm just gonna have a wall here and add the door to go through the courtyard and then you get these beautiful views inside out so this is if you're inside the house this is what the courtyard looks like and this is if you are somewhere here in the middle looking inside the house this is what it looks like and uh, yeah, that's how I got this uh, door come forward. Um, and so yeah, this is what pretty much um, the facade looks like after I added the first uh, four elements that I mentioned. Texture, um, lighting, you see I have like an LED strip here and I have an LED strip here. Also something that helps having um, a wood covered ceiling and then having some down lights. I also like to add this like a little touch where I cut the 
uh, ceiling or the roof and I have like a tree that goes through it and this is in California so I'm sure they can grow um, they can grow palm trees there and then having planters on the side and that's how I elevated the look I think this is everything that I did for the first floor but I do want to now take you to the other side of the house and I will show you what I did so which brings me to my last point which is integrate structural systems into the design I see a lot of designers they would design everything then then they would stick the columns to the design and it just looks like an afterthought but if you are able to actually incorporate the structure without even people knowing that it's structural that's actually pretty good it's a good design tip so if you notice here in the before besides talk we're not going to talk about the how how much the roof sticks out and like how it makes the whole thing looks really dark um, I mean this was not facing south or west so it, we're not gonna get a lot of glare anyways so we didn't really need to have the roof protruding that much but also notice how like we have the structure sticking out here and it just looks strange so what I proposed to the client is I told him so why don't we have these blades kind of they would cut through the house through the facade and they are structural and at the same time they are integrated so if you notice what I did here with this one so this one separates the kitchen area from the living area and this blade separates what happened to be a bar afterwards from the living area so we are having these three braids that these three blades that are cutting through the house and at the same time they're structural so that was kind of like I hit it in in the layout with that without having without having the structure to stick out too much and I also do that sometimes with stairs I see a lot of people like they hide stairs like in the back corner or something I'm like no put it in the front really embrace it if it's there just use it and like let the world see it so that's what I uh, I did with the structure here instead of just like having two sticks coming down um, so that's for the columns so yeah these are just like some other renderings that I did from the riverside uh, some more renderings here again if you notice the lights uh, the linear lights really worked on the backyard here as well the down lights so yeah again don't think of your columns as a functional element think of it how think of how you can use them as a design element because nothing kills as a design as quick as a structural or maintenance element that wasn't thought through and was just like kind of slammed afterwards and you can really tell that it was like kind of an afterthought last but not least keep it minimal have only one statement design avoid tacky railings guardrails unless the whole facade is about that and they are the statement of the design then sure but if you're not but if you're not trying to make it all about the guardrail and the and the railing and most of the time it's not about the guardrail or the railing so Keep it simple don't let them distract you from the main idea or from the main facade and keep the paint as flat as possible and if you are really really struggling then just paint it white have the windows and the doors trimmed in black and it's it looks fantastic just that way so yeah just don't overdo it when in doubt don't overdo it so yeah th those are pretty much my tips that I always use but as usual I'm gonna sound like a broken record but always communicate with your client uh, I know architects and designers tend to have this like big ego where they're like hired to give opinions But listen, you're like you're not Howard Rourke. We are in the service business So be humble listen to feedback have a clear explanations for your ideas and concepts And I'm sure the client will buy it half of architecture is pretty much selling your ideas so that was it for me today. Please let me know down in the comment below what tips and tricks do you use to elevate your design. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.